is everybody doing today? This is Mickey. Today I'd like to take just a few moments to talk about the AI masking feature that Adobe has incorporated into Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and Adobe Camera Raw. And this new masking feature allows us to select a landscape and we select it by going to our masking area and clicking on landscape and it will go ahead and evaluate that picture using AI and determine what areas can it specifically mask out and there's up to seven areas that it can mask so in this example let me just click on landscape you can see it's doing evaluation and it shows us that it has found four masks that it think applies to this picture if we hover over the mask you can see the overlay showing what's been masked so we have sky we have architecture we have vegetation and we have natural ground now let me step back for just a minute and show you the concept where this came from and we've probably been you've probably used this before and here we're looking at a person we're looking at people in our Lightroom masking and we'll select a person and as we do that you can see it breaks out into up to 10 now this only has nine because she has no facial hair that would bring in the last mask but using you can designate up to 10 different masking areas that are very specific to the person. Well, Adobe decided to do the same thing with landscape. Now, I'm gonna show you one other picture, and I'm using this one. This is an AI-generated picture that I made just for this demonstration because it demonstrates all the seven areas that the landscape mask, AI mask, will, will uh, separate out. So let's go to landscape, and as you can see, it found sky, mountain, architecture, vegetation, water, artificial ground, and natural ground. Now, if we want all of these, all we do is just click on each box. You wanna make sure you have this turned on, create seven masks, because if we don't, all you're gonna get is a mask of the whole area. And then we hit create mask. Now, once the masks are created, you can look up here and see this is natural ground, this is artificial ground. Well, if we look at natural ground, you can see there's areas that it includes that was also included in artificial ground. So that takes me to the next topic. While these masks aren't exactly perfect, they're still good enough to put in place and then modify them with adding, subtraction, or intersection to make the mask exactly like you want. But more importantly, these masks are just another tool. So as we are developing our masks, as we've had in the past, you know, it's always good to have a tool that we can use for add, use for subtract, or use for intersect to really specify our masking area exactly like we want it. So let me give you an example of how we might do that. We'll go back to this picture of the church, and we're going to go to Landscape. And we're going to click sky, architecture, vegetation, and natural ground. Now, and we're going to hit create masks. Now, as you can see, the natural ground looks pretty good. But when we go to vegetation, again, we have everything covered up, including natural ground. This is where we can use one of these new masking features to further refine the photograph. And we'll do that by going to vegetation and clicking on the little icon here. And we're going to subtract select landscape natural ground and we're going to hit create mask now you can see now our vegetation has been further refined let me just add a little bit to it and a little color i like this is a fall shot so in this manner we were able to use the subtract to get rid of the natural ground and or, concentrate just on our vegetation. So that's what I really enjoy about using this these, uh, new AI masking is not just that it will mask certain areas, it's that it gives us tools to take away or add to existing masks so we can get that mask exactly like we want. So let's take another look at a, a photograph and see how we can use these masks. Now I'm just going to process out this out just a little bit. Uh, we'll start out with our basic panel, and I'm going to use the Adaptive Color Profile. Another new feature was brought in the last couple months, and I just love this one. So you can see it cleaned it up really nice. I want to add a little exposure to it. I'm going to grab my 
eraser tool. I'm going to hit this spot up here and we can also click on this eraser tool, turn on visualize spots and find any others that we need to get rid of about like this. All right, let's turn this back off. So now let's, let's talk about, you know, using our masking, our landscape masking to further refine this picture. So we're going to hit landscape. You can see it's detecting our landscape. Now, in some people that use this, if there are a lot of features up to seven, it might take a few minutes, not a few minutes, but a few seconds for do the analysis. So please be patient when you're running this because it is evaluating the whole picture with AI technology. So it might not be as quick as drawing a radio mask or a linear mask. So we're gonna go ahead and select all these areas and then determine first, do we need that area mask? Because is, is the mask good enough to use? And if it is a mask we want to use, can we make it better by using addition, subtraction, or intersection? So we're going to hit create mask for these four. And we're going to look at the first one, sky. That looks pretty good. I don't think I need to really mess with that. You know, if I want to bring my exposure down for that mask, it makes the sky look a little better. So we're going to call that, that's a good mask. The next one is vegetation. And I personally think that's a pretty good one too. So let's uh, bring up the exposure a little bit. I wanna add a little color. I'm gonna go down here to my color picker. I'm gonna take a color about right here. And we'll just look at the saturation, see if that looks any better. That's about right, like I like it there. And uh, I'm gonna bring the, the exposure down just a little bit. So now we've used these two masks, vegetation and sky, and, and they're pretty good. I, I like these. Next, let's look at water. So this is not a good mask. It's just, you know, it's a hard thing considering that the water is pretty much the same color as our land. So it's going to be, anybody's going to have a hard time masking that out. But let's see what else we can do with this. So we have our water mask and we have our natural ground. So let's take our natural ground, click here and subtract by landscape. And let's take out the water, create the mask. Now let's look at it a lot better. All right. A lot of this water is not included in there anymore, which is good, but we have this landscape problem up here. So let's do that again. Let's do another subtract, select landscape, and let's remove vegetation and create our mask. Now, if we look at our mask, could it be better? Sure, it could be better. But you can see using the subtraction, how we've gotten rid of a lot of the area. We got rid of the vegetation, we got rid of the water, and now we have natural ground. And really, truly, if we drop the exposure here a little bit, maybe bring up the shadows, it does give us some contrast in these areas. And these areas that it didn't hit, we could throw another radial mask or linear mask in here. But it, it did give us some help. I mean, look at before, after, before and after. I kind of like that it is giving us some shadow areas on these highlight areas. So even though it's not a total mask, it still does a lot for us. So we have used all four of our masks. We have our sky mask, we have our vegetation, we have our water, which let's try this one. We'll hit water and let's subtract landscape natural ground. So here we're, we're, it's getting close. Now we can, you know, maybe take a brush, uh, hit subtract, say brush, and let's turn the flow up all the way. And we can start hitting this area of the natural ground because all we want is water. So just with a little modification, you know, that water mask might just work well for us. We drop the, a little bit on the exposure maybe turn it a little bluer. It's hard to say, but at least we have that area that we can uh, mask out. So in this picture, wasn't too bad, you know. Let's go back to um, our picture of the church and we're gonna do the same thing. So we have sky, we have architecture, vegetation, and natural ground. So we can go ahead and start with the sky and bring that tone down just a little bit to add a little more blue to the sky add a little blue this way and we might better refine around here because we're starting to get a glow in here and the best way to do that is we're going to go to the sky and we're going to add to the mask we're going to use a brush we're going to make sure we have our auto mask on 
I'm going to take my flow to about 50%. I want a big, big brush because the plus mark, remember, is the area that we're going to keep the color. So as we click, see how we just light it? And we're using a flow of 50%. So I just keep clicking. As long as my blue, my plus mark is on the blue, it's taking away the mask within the trees here. So now if I bring this down, see how much, we'll never get that dark. But see how much better it makes that mask? If I turn off my brush, I want to show you. I'm going to turn this brush off. That's what it looked like before we subtracted. That's what it looks like now. Before and after. So the secret is to make sure you have your auto mask on, that you have your plus mark over the color that you want to add to the mask, and just click around the tree like this. And even over here on this tree, we'll click two or three times. And down here, as long as my plus is on the blue, it's only going to affect the blue. So now we don't really want to make exposure changes too great, but at least it looks more natural without that, that glow in there. So as you can see, these masks, they do work pretty well. They don't work good in all circumstances. And that's why when you do this landscape masking, just go ahead and evaluate each one. And don't just think about the area that it's masking. I want you to think about how can I use it to make my other masks better. That's, that's the central theme that I'm trying to get through here. And then also, I want you to remember, depending on what kind of computer, PC, or Mac you have, it is evaluating the whole picture using AI and trying to discern these separate masks. So it may take a few seconds more than you're used to seeing. So just be patient, let it do its work, and after it shows you the mask, just go ahead and evaluate how you can make those masks a little better and how you can use them to add, subtract, or intersect to make that masking for your photograph just perfect. All right, before we end this, I just have one other thing that I want to uh, let you know about, and that's about this little red dot here under our basic panel. Because we're using all AI masks now, any changes that we make inside that AI mask, if it's not updated, then it'll give us this little red dot. And all we have to do is click on the basic panel right here, and there's a little update button. Just go ahead and click update, and it will update that AI mask. AI masks when overlay another one who are doing add and subtraction, sometimes they both don't get updated. And that's why we see that little red dot. So just go to your basic panel, click on the update button, and you'll be good to go. I hope this helped everybody out. It's a really nice new addition that they've put in in Lightroom, and I believe it's going to lead to a lot better pictures. If you have any questions about how to use this, any way how to modify your mask, please drop me a note, and I'll be glad to help you out any way I can. And like I've said before, I can't wait to talk to you again.